On my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that Someone's gonna help me, ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious I'ma go cause some pain, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call a shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless So Element always has really nice boxes. They ship their stuff in, and part of that is just to keep the product from ever being damaged. So there's a good amount of decent density foam in here. Um, it's really over the top. It's, it's quite a bit more than you'd ever need, but it's gonna ensure that your product doesn't get damaged in shipping. Even the scope rings, guys. Um, I do recommend the Element scope rings. They're really high quality. The fit and finish was very nice. Comes with its own tool, of course, and they're nice and low on the scope that I'm running right now. I think they're a 0.94 if I remember right, but they're, 34 millimeter, they're called the AccuLite rings. And so they have um, highs, which are, or lows, sorry, that's 0.94. Mediums are 1.06 and highs are 1.22. So that gives you a little indication in case your scope didn't fit just right, what you would need to order to make your, your optic fit particularly well on your, you know, your rig, whatever you're gonna run and maybe future rigs. So I like having the math there done for you. That's really nice and it's a good advertising plan. Moving on, you're always gonna get one of these. So this is uh, their quality guarantee. It's an inspection card. Somebody's gonna sign it. And then on the back side, if you wanna get more information, you can go there. On the bottom, it tells you that this is what you would scan for a QR to get more resources on their optics. So this is a useful thing. Don't lose that. Really nice cleaning cloth. This one is uh, not the type that's like the little mini one that maybe is for that kind of glass and maybe it's not this one is definitely for optics it's a high quality one hold on to that one actually it's a good one then you have your reticle guide booklet and so here's your reticle guide and something i really appreciate about element optics is so you have a, a little bit of a, a information on the back you might want to read through that but mostly on here it's just going to give you some of the values for your sub tensions and I actually use that, especially if I'm teaching NRL 22 and I'm showing somebody the reticle, I will go through this with them. And it's very useful to explain mills to someone like in a heartbeat, really fast. Nice to have right on the side there and I can point to it and show them if we're doing practicing um, um, holdovers or something like that. And then of course, if you're, especially if you're newer to optics, this is gonna tell you what the parts are called that might be really useful for you. And a little bit of information about leveling your scope, mounting your scope, and how the features themselves work. And especially when it comes to the zero stop, if you're new to that, they have a particularly cool zero stop. You don't need a tool for the top, so you don't you don't want to damage anything. Trying to pry that off. There's a proprietary method to release that on the top. I don't see on too many optics. And then a zero stop, which uh, there's only a handful of zero stops out there, and I prefer the one that they have. This is a good um, style of zero stop. So you get your information in there. So obviously very crisp turrets, sound very good, felt very good, easy to get it to line up on each individual marker on those lines, as well as zero, which is always really important. Any scope at any price point, I want that to work. If it has exposed turrets, I want it to line up on those numbers. And this one, of course, it, it passes that test easily, both on the windage as well as the elevation. Both sound great, very tactile, good feel, and uh, the important part, they tracked true for me. And then finally on the back, all the specs that you probably should already know if you're purchasing it, but it might be good to review. You might have some questions in the future, and that's just something to keep with you. Maybe keep it in your range bag or uh, your rifle bag as you head out in case you need to reference some of that information again. So it's important to me that the parallax is very functional and smooth, and it is smooth. It has a good texture on all the turrets and the dials on the scope and it goes down from below 15 meters by a little bit up to infinity. Very good parallax knob. I appreciate that. Smooth, everything that I need it to be. No complaints at all. The uh, next feature that I would comment on would be the illumination. It is daylight bright and obviously six settings with an in-between off. I don't use illumination, but if it's there, I want it to be daylight bright. And this one was functionally daylight bright for me with bright snow and uh, sun at my back. 
All right, so I think it's very forward thinking that Element Optics includes that switch view knob on there. So you can just screw that in and that gives you a little assistant, although you don't have to use it. Uh, I found that the texture on the ring itself is already very decent and it moves pretty freely uh, back and forth between magnification ranges. I'm on nine right now, just to let you know, on nine power, that's when you can use all the mills for your holdover. And so as you uh, magnify the image more and more, you magnify the reticle more and more, and you can't see quite as much of your holdover there. And that's okay, I can still use quite a bit at 25 power. There's lots of holdover there. You're gonna be able to use your windage pretty well. But if you wanna use the full range of that reticle, which is a huge part of it for me, I like that design, nine power, which is still plenty of magnification. A lot of guys will tell you that five to 25 is basically the ideal range between target shooting, competition shooting, if you're into NRL, or perhaps NRL 22. I think in part two of this series, I'm gonna show this optic on a 22 caliber rifle, but right now on a center fire, I think five to 25 is fantastic. In fact, I opted to throw this on my six and a half Creedmoor Savage. It's a 110 Elite Precision, and I messed around at a few different ranges, 300, 600, and a little past 1,000, and I was having great success on different size targets, everything down to minute of angle targets at 600, and then at 1,000, I was shooting a full-size IDPA or a IPSC target, and I was having great success with it. It was a very good reticle. All right, the sun uh, is gonna go down in about one minute. So I have one minute of sunlight left. I'm using some Hornady Super Performance. You know what, this stuff has not performed superly. I don't know, it hasn't done amazing for me so far um, at distance. I've never shot it really close, so I'm just shooting at 200 yards right now, and I'm really curious what kind of groups I'm gonna get out of it. Um, I think I just only gathered my zero offset when I first got the ammo, and I never really gave it a chance because at six and 800 yards, it was just, I don't know if it's too fast or what. Didn't perform super well, but I'm gonna go ahead and test the glass as far as light goes at a really dark time like this. I already just looked through it, I peeked through it real quick to set the parallax, and I'm really surprised on my three quarter inch um, dot down there at 200 yards on a gray brown, you know, cardboard, I guess, background it actually seems like really full of light. So I'm happy with what I'm seeing so far. I think it'll help me shoot those groups. Um, the snow helps a little bit with residual light, but don't get me wrong, the camera brightens this a lot. It is dark. It is not light out, it is dark. And so normally this is where scopes begin to struggle if they're an economy type scope. So if this does well, I'm gonna say that's a plus one for the element Titan. The glass itself, the glass itself, guys, is actually pretty decent. I feel confident that I can see well downrange, and um, at further distances, I have t tried it at dusk at further distances, and I felt similarly, uh, I had more light and less trees. Right now I'm shooting kind of a, a narrow path, and so it's even darker down there on my target, but I felt pretty good in big open areas too. Lots of light, um, could see my target well, and that definitely helps to not have all that tree cover, but right now, 
Uh, man, we're, we're at sundown, and it's collecting plenty enough. I can see my target well. I don't see any issues with the glass. Um, collection is good. That big objective certainly can help, and Element has some videos talking about um, the value of big objectives and how light is actually collected. They have a, a series called Five Myths, I think, about optics, and it might be worth watching after you're done with this video. So here are the things that are a big deal to me. 5 to 25 magnification range is near perfect. 34 millimeter tube allows for that 26 mils of internal travel, which is fantastic. And then it's got a 15 yard minimum parallax. And that's pretty much exactly what I want, you know, for air guns, 22s, or center fire rifles. The reticle is one of my favorite. The APR 2D MRAD is really, really my favorite reticle. I like the center dot size for some reason. I think it's just a hair bigger than some competitors and I can actually see it. And it's great when I'm dialing to a target and I wanna shoot tiny little holes, bug hole groups at a long ways. I like that dot. And then if I'm not doing that, I wanna hold over and I'm just hitting steel. I have all that range in the reticle on nine power. So the scope itself, form factor, the function, the smoothness, crispness of the turrets as well as the function of the glass it is not the highest range of their glass there's the next level up called the nexus but this one is very functional for competitive shooters i think hunters and guys like me that do a little bit of everything it's a great great scope I want to take a second to say thank you to Element Optics for the opportunity to review this optic. Now I've tried their Helix out and had good results with that, love the reticle. I have not tried out the Nexus yet. Now if you need something that is a little more affordable, check out their Helix. I had a really good experience with that and I do have a review about that. I like the Titan. I think this mid, you know, kind of class, mid-tier scope in their lineup is kind of my bread and butter. It's a great scope for target shooting and competition both and it fits my shooting style probably really well. I think my next plan is to put this optic on my NRL 22 gun and run that for a couple months and see how it goes. I think I'm really going to like it because of that reticle. It's going to help me shoot those really tiny targets and I know I can trust the tracking in those turrets and so I'm excited about that. Keep checking back on the channel. If you haven't liked the video yet, please go ahead and like the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would seriously appreciate it if you would subscribe right now. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. And also, head over to Element Optics website. See what else they have. See what they have coming. I know that some new reticles were just released today, and I'm really excited to see what optics they have coming in the future. It's a good company. I can get behind them, and I can certainly get behind the Element Titan. Good job, Element Optics. I like it. I want to see more of it. I'm back, baby I'm back, baby I'm back. I got the cash in the bag, baby I'm back. Put a rock star on the side, I'm a little bit.